Hello, this is Warren Redlick. Thank you so much for watching. Welcome to uh, Warren's YouTube stream. We're going to talk about Tesla stock. We're going to I'm going to go through three different paths. I see Tesla going to seventy five hundred dollars a share for this video. The assumption is that in twenty thirty one Tesla will reach seventy five hundred dollars a share. I'll show you the bottom line of how we get to seventy five hundred dollars a share in twenty thirty one. The revenue sources, it's vehicle revenue, it's energy revenue, and it's robo-taxi revenue. I got three different paths just to give you a sense, but the critical question that I wanted to address today is not what's the end point, because you can vary the end point. The question is, is it going to be a curve like this where it's slow rise and then a sudden rise at the end? Is it going to be a straight line or more of a straight line, or is it going to be like a quick rise and then a flattening? That's and and that's that's an oversimplification of what we're going to see but here we go are you ready let's go and sorry before i dive in t-shirts at elonbits.com this is the most popular t-shirt on elonbits.com the tesla man shirt if you use the the discount code summer vibes 20 you get 20 percent off you can see that discount code in the top of the chat and at the, at the in the video description i'll be doing another live stream in about 50 minutes on the daily lie to talk about general topics i try to do a second live stream every day on the daily lie that's my other channel which is a free speech channel so we can talk about things we can't talk about on youtube and uh and please support me on the locals platform which is where the daily lie is on patreon as a youtube channel member or as a twitter subscriber and i'll probably think of something else i should be telling you in a minute oh referral code my referral code for tesla is in the description and it's in the chat so Let's dive in. Are you ready? Let's go. This is a spreadsheet. I'm not saying it's the best spreadsheet, but this is a spreadsheet. You can see on the far right. Oh, let me pop up my arrow. Okay. So, ah, not that arrow. Right. So, this is my red arrow. You can see over here, this is the share price. Over here, you have market cap. At the bottom, you've got 7500 This is going to be consistent across all the spreadsheets. $7,500 share price. 20 million vehicles, two terawatt hours of energy um, at $500 a kilowatt hour works out to a trillion dollars in revenue and energy and a trillion dollars in robo taxi revenue. Total revenue of $3 trillion, a $24 trillion market cap, which is 8x the revenue. Um, these are, again, ballpark numbers. This is just an attempt to show you paths. The critical issue is going to be when does Tesla reach $500 a share? When does Tesla reach $1,000 a share? When does Tesla reach a market cap of $2 trillion? These are the kinds of questions that you want to see. You know, what's the path to the, the $7,500 share price? <laughs> and there's cats in the house, so I'm, I'm allergic. So cats, pollen, I don't know what the story is. So here what you see is if we start at ballpark 2 million vehicles in 2023 and energy at about 20 gigawatt hours, which is in the ballpark of what Tesla's doing in energy, we get a total revenue about $110 billion in revenue. I think it might be $100 billion. This is just a ballpark to get us started. You get this a market cap of $880 billion. It gets us to a $275 share price. This is just a clutch to get us started. Okay, and you can see the path that we go to 2.8 million vehicles in 2024, 3.5 million. This is the slow path. Right, this is the slow path that rises quickly at the end. We get to five thousand dollars share price in twenty thirty. We get to a five hundred dollars share price in twenty twenty five. Just to give you a perspective of where we're going, the medium path gets us to over five hundred dollars a share in twenty twenty five, but it's really six hundred dollars a share. We basically get to market cap of two trillion in twenty twenty five. We break a thousand dollars a share somewhere in the early twenty twenty seven, and same endpoint. This is the medium version. And then we've got the fast version. The fast version, we get to $500 a share in 2024. We get to $2.4 $2 trillion market cap in 2025. We get over $1,000 a share in 2026. Same endpoint, $7,500, 20 million vehicles, uh, two gigawatt hour, two terawatt hours of energy at, at a trillion dollars in revenue. And robo taxi revenue a trillion dollars, three trillion total revenue twenty. So again, the end point's the same. the The point of this video is not to say this is where we're going to be in twenty thirty one. Although I think this is where we're going to be in twenty thirty one. The point is to say what are the different paths that get us there. 
So let me just see. Okay. Allergic to BS form. Okay. So let's go back to the slow chart. Sorry, that, I just want to give you that history. Now, before we go into everything else, I want to uh, t quickly say, if you are a supporter on the Locals platform on Patreon as a YouTube channel member or a Twitter subscriber, I invite those supporters to submit questions in advance of the video so that we can talk about those. I do a Q&A at the end of the video. I do the supporter Q&A early. We're going to do that now. This is the Locals platform. WarrenRedlick.Locals.com, Merch at ElonBits.com. So you can support me on the Locos platform. So this is, I think this is Derwin. I don't know what happened to, did I cut this off? I cut this off. I think this is Derwin Pie. Derwin says, your Tesla battery revenue model is much easier to understand than ARCS Invest's Monte Carlo model. You get bigger numbers than their 2000 and 2027. Is their model too complex or is it useful for an in-depth analysis of all the other factors? Also, what do you think of their 10% cap on Tesla in their ETFs? That seems to limit their upside when things go well. Um, look, if you don't want to buy into a, uh, an ETF because they have a rule you don't like, don't buy into that ETF. I just buy Tesla stock as far as the 10% cap. I think that's their approach, and it's an approach that they explain clearly to their investors. So if that's what you want to follow, that's what you want to follow. Um, yes, it does limit their upside. That's you know that's just the deal. They're, they're, it's, it's not a Tesla fund. If you want to invest in Tesla, invest in Tesla. Is their model too complex or is it useful for an in-depth analysis of all the other factors? I don't love their model. I think the Monte Carlo model, the Monte Carlo model is like, let's throw a thousand assumptions and come up with, you know, a thousand different variations and then we'll get a ballpark of where we're going. And I personally don't like that model. I like my seat of the pants model better. I'm not saying their model's wrong. It's just not the model I use. And fundamentally, it's still driven by assumptions. So I think having that, uh, the the wide variety of results allows you to hide what your assumptions are and what drove you there. Do I think, so then Stephen Gillis asked, do I think FSD will be required to purchase on all vehicles Tesla produces in the future, including higher end vehicles like SX Roadster Cybertruck? If so, what does Tesla charge for it? Um, I think it will be included in the price and the price will go up. I think once FSD reaches um, full call it level five, whatever you want to call it, um, better than human, safer than human significantly. Anywhere that they're selling Teslas where it's recognized as safer than human and allowed to drive, it would be foolish for Tesla to sell a car without it. It would be less safe than selling a, selling a car without, selling a car with that. It would be less safe to sell a car without it than to sell a car with it. Um, and it would be unwise for the investors. If you have a car that you can sell for $200,000, or you can sell it for $50,000, and the only difference is whether you flick a switch and the software's on, as long as there are buyers at the higher price point, why would you sell it to anybody at the lower price point? Um, and I think there will be infinite buyers at the higher price point once it works. Um, so yeah, I and I, you know, does it matter on Roadster? I don't know. Crazy Dave says, regarding regenerative braking on the Cybertruck, do you think mass being towed would provide an additional higher level of regen over and above the maximum regen available when the Cybertruck isn't towing? Um, I think the car will regen as much as it can. If you are great, if you are slowing gently and the additional mass generates more energy, then I think the car will probably capture that additional energy. I don't know. That's a very technical engineering question that is over my head. So I'm not going to address that. And then there was a YouTube question. Are the Luddites, I don't know if you guys saw this video where I think it was in San Francisco. People are putting cones on Waymo or Cruise robo taxis. I think it's the Waymo robo taxis. They're doing it tell. Um, are they committing a crime? It's probably a misdemeanor. Uh, I don't know. I mean, that's California law. I don't know what the, what the legal issue would be. It's probably at least a misdemeanor. It's probably not a felony. Um, if in doing so they caused an accident, if they caused a vehicle to stop in a bad location and an accident was resulted from it, then the person who deliberately caused what turned out to be an accident, I would hold them responsible for the accident. And if someone was killed, then it would be vehicular manslaughter. That's how I would view it. But um, you know how the courts will view it, I don't know. Any guesses on what slang term will evolve for robo-taxi sabotage? No, I don't have a guess on that. I didn't think about that. 
I like the concept. Okay, so let's go back to our spreadsheets. Again, this is the slow model. So the arrow up here. So looking at looking at 2020, let's so we're in 2023 now. $275 a share is roughly our share price. Tesla is going to produce roughly 2 million vehicles. Revenue from vehicles is going to be about $100 billion. Revenue from energy is going to be about $10 billion. No robo-taxi revenue. You end up with about $110 billion in, in revenue and a market cap of about $880 billion. This is a good ballpark of where we are today, and you get a $275 share price. So then let's look to next year. If next year things grow slowly, Tesla produces 2.8 million vehicles. That is a 40% growth rate. That's not even that slow. It's not really that slow, but let's go with it. You get 140 billion in revenue, 30 gigawatt hours of energy. I think they're going to do better than that, but 15 uh, billion dollars in profit and revenue from energy. Still no robo taxi. I delayed robo taxi in the slow model, 2026. That it takes Tesla that long to get robo taxi up and running, and it only makes a billion dollars in revenue in 2026. This is trivial. You know the real revenue starts much later, 2029. But in 2024, you get $155 billion in revenue, $1.2 trillion market cap, and a $388 share price in 2024. So, and yeah, I left out, by the way, I see some references to Dojo. I left out AI training as a service. I left out bot in my models. Um, you know, if bot comes along and bot potentially makes this go a lot faster and the revenue go a lot higher, um, you know, really, if you get bot, then the $7,500 a share price is a joke and you're looking at $20,000 share price. I don't even know what bot, the bot drives the share price to insane levels. So then you got to 2025 and this is where we hit $500 a share. Again, this is the slow model. Tesla produces 3.5 million vehicles, 175 billion in revenue on those vehicles. I think I gave it a $50,000 average selling price just to simplify this model. Because yeah, you can see 20 million vehicles, you get a trillion dollars in vehicle revenue. I think when we get to 20 million vehicles, if they're not including FSD in the price, the average selling price is going to be lower, and this number is going to be lower. But this is just a clutch to get us to a result. This is not. Um, this is not uh, intended to be a precise representation of 2031. It's just this is a think piece, right? What's the path? So you hit $500 share price in 2025. 50 gigawatt hours of energy, still no robo taxi, $1.6 trillion market cap. Now let's contrast this. Let's go from the slow model to straight to the fast model. In the fast model, we get $500 share price in 2024. We still have no robo taxi revenue, but we've accelerated quickly to 3.5 million vehicles. Now here's the underlying story. This is what really drove this. Um, let me just say really quick what really drove this video is I have a question I don't know the answer to. How quickly is Tesla going to build next generation vehicles? Are they building one factory in Giga Mexico, getting it up and running? And once it's up and running, are they going to build another next generation vehicle factory in, say, China? And three or four years from now, they have four next generation vehicle factories going. Or are they building four next generation vehicle factories at the same time? One in Mexico, one in the US, one in China, and one in Europe. The fast model is they're building all four factories at once. Now, I barely now, I'm now fairly confident that the Tesla is at least building two next generation vehicle factories at the same time, Mexico and Texas. I'm fairly confident that that's the case. And so the slow version is probably not gonna apply. That between Mexico and Texas, we will have 4 million vehicles of vehicle production capacity on the next generation vehicle alone by the end of 2025. So that's a pretty rapid growth. And then if we're going to see, and I would guess we're going to see China quickly. I'm not sure about Europe, but I would guess we're going to see China quickly. Maybe we're going to see a Japan. Maybe we're going to see an in India. You know, and if we see a lot of these next generation factories quickly, that gets us to 20 million faster. And I'm leaving out the, you know, I have, I'm of the opinion that there's going to be a smaller vehicle in the future, a mini version of the vehicle for markets like India, Africa, poor countries that can't afford the larger vehicles. Um, Mark Plot says, Warren, indicators show multiple next-gen factories. Elonbits.com for the water bottle and the t-shirt. Um, yes, well, so a fairly reliable source, I think, accidentally told a group of us 
that Elon was working on was paying a lot of attention to the Giga Mexico and Giga Texas next generation factories. It was it was a it was slid into a conversation. It was not the subject of the conversation. I heard it. I was like, what? Um, and I believe that that's true. Are they also working on China at the same time? Are they also working on a European factory at the same time? Is all this stuff going to happen like that? My guess is Europe's going to be slower. My guess is China's going to be fairly quick. So we may see three next generation factories in a hurry. And then like Europe, sorry, we, we will see China, US, and Mexico quickly. And then we'll see an India and Japan factory down the road. That's a guess. All right. Uh, Admiral Medjay asks if the weather is scorching hot in the United States as well. I think parts of the United States are pretty hot. I don't think it's this Florida. Florida is warm anyway. Um, is it accurate that Giga Austin could expand 10x or so, William asks. Giga Texas could expand. Uh, I believe there's room for, there was room for seven Giga factories in Austin on the property they already own. However, I think they built some other things, so there's probably room for four or five Giga, Giga uh, factories. I don't think that's what's going to happen. I think the next generation factory is going to be a smaller footprint. And then maybe there'll be a mega factory or more battery factories. What do I think the split between robo taxi fleets by Tesla and Hertz and citizen robo taxis? If I were Tesla, I would do predominantly Tesla robo taxis. I think it's pretty clear they're going to commit to selling to robo taxi fleets like Hertz. Um, I don't know how many citizens are going to be willing to pay for robo taxi if it's $200,000, but we'll see. Uh, do I think Tesla stock will hit $500 before the year's over? So Stevenson asks, do I think Tesla stock will hit $500 before the year's over? That's a good way to bring this back to the topic we're talking about. Even in my fast model, we don't get to $500 a share this year. In my fast model, we get to $500 a share in, uh, in 2024. Um, and I'm really thinking the end of the year, just to be clear, that at some point in 2024, we realize we're going to hit 3.5 million vehicles. Energy growth is going to be 50, uh, any energy is going to grow to 50 gigawatt hours. This is an oversimplification of energy, right? Because energy is also solar, but just oversimplification, 50 gigawatt hours. And that gets us to a 1.6, that gets us to $200 billion in revenue, a $1.6 trillion market cap and a $500 share price. And I, even in the, on the fast case, I think this is a little optimistic. I don't think the vehicles will get produced that quickly in the next generation vehicle factories. I think this gets more realistic as we get down to 2025 and 2026. So the $1,000 a share in 2026 is more likely. And I don't like talking about what's the share price going to be this year. I think short-term stock prices are hard to predict. So that's the fast case. Let's, let's keep going on the fast case. So just to give you a sense of where we are in the fast case, we had 10 million vehicles in 2027. 10 million vehicles is basically 6 million of the next generation vehicle. Nearly four, um, 3 million of the, of the Model 3 and Model Y. And then, you know, whatever else comes together. Um, Cybertruck and semi. Cybertruck's a big chunk of it too. Um, that, that gets us to 10 million vehicles. And really most of this growth to 20 million is probably either next generation vehicle or the vehicle after next generation vehicle. Any ideas on second quarter gross margins? I don't really pay attention to margins. I think people focus on that too much. Um, what matters is getting more vehicles out because when FSD goes live, that's going to be a huge uh, switch that's going to be flipped. That's going to generate a huge amount of revenue and profit. Um, interesting. Jim Whitehead says he tried to rent a Hertz Model 3 in Florida and they were all rented out at least a month in advance. That's wild. Okay. So you can see here, we get to nearly $3,000 a share in 2028, um, 12 million vehicles. And, and the, this is the key. This is the kicker that really drives everything. Because what you see is you've got a trillion dollars in revenue from vehicles, a trillion dollars in revenue from energy. This is probably optimistic on the energy side and a trillion dollars in revenue from robo-taxi. And I just pulled the robo-taxi thing out of my butt, but you get the idea. So this is where robo-taxi revenue starts in 2025 at a billion dollars is not a lot in the world of Tesla, right? That's the company's got $300 billion in revenue and $1 billion in robo taxi. That's not a big deal. And by the way, there's paths where uh, vehicles grow slower, energy grows faster, and robo taxi grows faster or slower. All three of these could grow at different paces. So 
this is the super optimistic scenario where everything grows fast quickly, you know, at the same time, right? And the slow scenario is everything grows slow at the same time. Here's the slow scenario. Like everything's growing slow. You can imagine where robo-taxi revenue takes off quicker, but the, and I think the thing is once robo-taxi revenue takes off, once robo-taxi is delivered, vehicle sales go, go fast. Um, and what, the other thing we don't know is, is there a uh, battery supply sufficient? Let's look at the fast model again. Looking at the fast model, you get to, let's say, 5 million vehicles in 2025. Does Tesla have enough batteries uh, coming online for 2025 to be able to do 5 million vehicles? CATL committed to about uh, 2.5 terawatt hours of lithium iron phosphate in 2025. I think it was 2025 that they're going to, and, and LG Chem is committed to that much, and Tesla is going to be ramping. So I do think there's going to be enough battery capacity to support that. Then you get to 20, 10 million vehicles in 2027, and you get, uh, and you get 10 million vehicles in 2027, and 300 gigawatt hours of energy storage in 2027. You now you got to ask yourself: Is that going to do it? Right? Is that are we going to have enough? Um, battery production? Are we going to have enough lithium to sustain this volume of vehicles? And I mean, so these are questions on the fast version. I think the slow version is pretty straightforward that you can, there'll, there'll be sufficient batteries for the slow model. Um, okay, so CM says, what about they make 5 million bots by 2031? I left bots out of this. Just want to be clear, I left bots out of this. If you throw bots in, then things get crazier. What's my end of year prediction? I don't make short term predictions. To me, the end of the year is a is a my end of the year prediction is Tesla produces nearly two million vehicles, and the share price will be around three hundred dollars a share, maybe a little more. But I, you know, that's a wild guess. I I don't I don't see support for you know when I look at you know traditional valuations. Like my valuation is based on you know I see Robo Taxi coming and. I would back it out. This is how, how I think Wall Street's going to value the company, not how I value the company. But I think this is the driver. When you see this trillion dollars in revenue in revenue from RoboTaxi in 2031, you see the, you know $3 trillion in total revenue and a $24 trillion market cap, you back out to the share price here and you get a different approach. This share price is based on market cap, which is based on 8x revenue. And I think I went to a higher, no, it's still 8x revenue here in, 20, in 2031. I think some of my models I have a higher uh, share, you know, market cap based on a higher chunk of revenue. So by 2030, they won't need to mine lithium only recycling. No, I don't agree with that. Um, they're still ramping production. Um, the 2020 vehicles coming offline to be recycled. Let's let's say it's 10 years for the average vehicle to be recycled. They only produced like 500,000 vehicles in 2020. I think it was 2020. So recycling batteries from 500,000 vehicles is not going to produce enough batteries for 20 million vehicles. We, we go to recycling, to predominantly recycling in 2040. Um, if Tesla becomes so profitable and dominating, the feds will step in with antitrust and break up Tesla. That's a good question, Raymond. Um, let me take this off the screen. Let's address this question. Raymond says, if Tesla becomes so profitable and dominating, the feds will step in with antitrust and break up Tesla. It's not just the feds. It's also Europeans, the Chinese. It's not just the American government. It could be multiple governments that could say that Tesla's got too much market power. So my guess is that Tesla's management is sophisticated enough to recognize when that starts to become a threat and they will... Sp so this is the oversimplified model, right? If the Tesla team recognizes, hey, this is a problem, they spin off RoboTaxi as a separate company. They spin off Tesla Europe as a separate company. They spin off Tesla China as a separate company. They spin off Tesla Energy as a separate company. So while Tesla, the, co the collection of companies is worth $24 trillion, you know, Tesla Energy is worth $6 trillion. RoboTaxi is worth $6 trillion. Tesla Europe is worth, you know, $3 trillion. You can see where Tesla could divide things up to avoid that, that approach. And that, that's the approach I would take if I was Tesla. I'm not saying it's the right approach. Um... I also could see Tesla saying, you know what, we're going to give up here and there. We're going to license stuff and give other people a piece of the action. And that reduces Tesla's overall revenue and profit. And I think something people miss is that as Tesla grows like this, it grows the overall economy. The, the advantage of having robo-taxi model and low-cost electric vehicles, all these advantages are going to drive um, substantial 
uh, growth in the overall economy. So while Tesla's uh, market cap will be very high, the GDP will be much higher because the, the availability of low-cost transportation, the reduction in pollution, all these things are big drivers to accelerating the economy, the global economy as well. Yeah, check the t-shirts, the Tesla Man t-shirt. Very, this is by far the most popular t-shirt on ElonBits.com. Um, discount by uh, summer vibes 20 discount code at elonbits.com um yes johnny football elon is giving away patents he's letting people access the charging network these are all ways to reduce the the danger of an accusation that tesla is is dominating um, give me one minute i gotta clear my sinuses Sorry about that. Will Tesla bot wear short shorts? Yeah, probably. I could see Tesla bot wearing Tesla short shorts. Um, are Tesla spinoff better than having them under one roof? I don't see a problem with that. I, I think that, you know, if you are a shareholder in Tesla and they spin off Tesla Europe as an IPO, then you would get shares in the Tesla Europe IPO. If they spin off Tesla China, you would get shares in that. If the robo-taxi network is spun off, if Tesla Energy is spun off, I'm not sure what the central company is. Maybe Tesla, um, you know, maybe there is no central company. Um, how do these spinoffs benefit current shareholders? So I owned 3Com stock before Palm spun off, and I got stock in Palm when there was a spinoff. So you get you get shares in the other companies. I mean, tell Elon's still going to have a dominant, sh uh, a substantial share of all these companies and all that. Is my Elon Bits summer sale code still working? The, as far as I know, the summer vibes 20 sale code works on one item only, and it's uh, good through July 11th. So if you already bought a piece of merch with the summer vibes 20 discount code, I'm not sure you can buy again. Maybe if you use a different discount code, uh, a different credit card, or a different address, uh, I'm not sure how you would do that. Um, So, oh, and if, and Jim, if, uh, if it's an issue, any, any of my supporters, if, if you are a supporter of me on any of the platforms, the locals platform, YouTube channel members, um, uh, Twitter subscribers or Patreon, DM me on, message me on the platform. And whether if you're late after July 11th, or if you've already used the discount code, DM me. Uh, Jim, DM me, and I would I will give you a separate promo code if the if that promo code doesn't work. Um, the, the provider of the shirts, Teespring, is funding this particular discount, so it doesn't cut into my profit. It it reduces your sale price and it cuts into their profit. AC says, "What happened to your bug out cap?" And okay, this is a very different change. This is a very different topic. Um, I sold the apocalypse cabin because I'm moving to Japan. And even if I wasn't moving to Japan, I decided my plans are not going to use the Apocalypse Cabin anymore. I was going to build uh, something comparable closer to Melbourne that I was going to live in. But I since changed plans, I'm moving to Japan. All right, we're going to come back to the, the model for a second. Um, but I want to first say, you know, this tweet is my top tweet uh, recently. Uh, Elon said that energy storage at Tesla is growing 200 to 300% a year. If you go back <clears throat> to the slow model, Energy here is not growing at 200 to 300% a year. So the slow model is probably wrong about the energy side of the equation. If you look at the fast model, let me get the arrow up. If you look at the fast model, the fast model, you're growing, this is growing at more than 100%. This still isn't growing fast enough. The fast model is actually, I mean, maybe 20 gigawatt hours is over optimistic in the first place. But at 200 to 300% a year, 200% growth would be like 60. So I still didn't grow this fast enough on the energy side of the equation. Growing at 300% a year would be like 80 gigawatt hours in 2024. I don't know that they're going to get there, but that's very promising. So just really, you know, just covering that. Um, energy storage growing at 200, 300% a year. 
Check, follow me on Twitter. If you don't follow me already, please consider subscribing to me on Twitter. I do some content there. Um, just really want to quick wanted to cover some other tweets that I did. I did this tweet just like two days ago. This is the first landing of SpaceX's Falcon 9 orbital rocket booster, December 21, 2015. Um, this got a good response. This is one of my most popular tweets of the month. And I just wanted to mention this because, you know, please check out my Twitter. If, uh, watch this video. If you haven't seen the video, just go on YouTube and search for Falcon 9 first landing. Um, super inspiring video. And for me, this, this literally changed my life. This is the thing that triggered me to start investing in Tesla. I started buying Tesla a couple of months after this. Um, this has inspired me. This has inspired me. Tesla success has inspired me. Neuralink Boring Company. All of this has inspired me. Uh, I'm moving to Japan. I'm starting up. I've been working on starting up a pod car, a single passenger electric vehicle company. I've ideas for a solar farm, a solar housing, solar farm housing startup that I may pursue down the road. I'm decided to get married and have kids again. I'm inspired to do big things because. I've seen others do big things, and I hope you are all inspired to do big things by seeing... This was crazy. This is science fiction becoming reality. You know, nobody had done this in a practical way before. You know, had somebody at some point landed a propuls propulsively landed a rocket booster, a rocket maybe, but not like this. And they've, they've reused boosters something over 200 times. This is spectacular. And seeing people do incredible things, even though... They turn impossible into late, which is another t-shirt at elonbits.com. This is the kind of thing that gets me really excited. One last tweet. Um, I just wanted to cover this. <clears throat> There's been a flurry of activity on Twitter and, a, and a, I guess a, a continuation of the flurry in the media of attacks on full self-driving. So this is a YouTube account named AI Addict who also has a Twitter account. <clears throat> and he does this video where the car runs a red light. If you look at the very bottom of the video, there's a warning uh, a warning on the bottom of the video. I couldn't read it, but somebody else was able to read it. One or more of your cameras may be obscured. This is a very challenging intersection. If you look at the shape of this intersection, the intersection is really weird, you know, wonky or wanky or whatever. Um, if you look at this intersection, look at how this, to make a right turn, you go here, the, the road comes all the way up and then suddenly turns right, right at the end. And you can see the car is seeing, okay, this is a red light for this traffic, but there's a green light here. There's a green light over here. And you can see in the UI that the car is seeing green lights and red light. It's He specifically chose an intersection he knows is confusing. And, and this is the kind of intersection design that they don't make anymore. They, they don't make this kind of intersection anymore. So, you know, so be aware that you're going to see a, 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 a pile of FUD, fear, uncertainty, and doubt. Fake news. Mitchell Woolrich says, still no other company reusing first stage orbital rockets seven years. It's actually seven and a half years. Yes, it's the Orbcom 2 landing. Thank you, Mark Potochnik. Um, What was this question up here? Electronics and water don't mix. Maybe the outdoor bots will rain, rain jackets and clothes. Okay, I think bot will be waterproof. I mean, you know, charging is certainly waterproof. Teslas are Tesla cars are waterproof. I don't know why bot wouldn't be waterproof. I would assume that it will operate in, in the rain. Um, Budster Gerber starting more trouble. NTSB back in the headline. I think it's the NHTSA more than the NH NTSB. Yes, there is a, a SpaceX launch tonight. Thank you, Mark Potochnik. I think it's 8.30ish tonight. I'll be watching in person tonight. Wonky, not wanky. That's all of that. <laughs> okay, so I want to go back into the model. So... Here we've got pushing vehicles to 10 million in 2027. Um, it slows up. The, the, you know, you have fast growth here on vehicles. You have fast growth here on energy, and then everything starts to slow up. I didn't even make the growth that fast in energy. And you could, I could see this is a total of about three terawatt hours, which may be optimistic again. You know, will the world supply of lithium ion batteries and maybe sodium, sodium ion batteries be sufficient to support two terawatt hours of Tesla energy uh, in 2031? I don't know. And, I, and maybe the Tesla has backed off the two terawatt hour number for 2030. I think they may be closer to a terawatt hour by 2030 now. But I, I think that this is, you know, it's not crazy to think we can get there if the battery supply is there. Um, but just looking, you know, we, we crossed the 2.4 trillion. This is, again, the fast version. We crossed the $2.4 trillion market cap in 2025. 
2026, you see a nearly $4 trillion market cap. And at this point, Tesla is probably the most valuable company in the world. It's possible that, that Apple will grow enough that it will be competitive with this market cap in 2026. But by 2027, $5.6 trillion market cap. And, you know, $9 trillion. I mean, once it hits a $9 trillion market cap, Tesla is the largest company in the world. And I do think it's possible that you'll see antitrust efforts to break Tesla up. But I think if you had gone back to, I think if you went back to 20, 25, uh, 2015, and you told people that Apple was going to have a $3 trillion market cap, people would talk about breaking Apple up. And they're not breaking Apple up. I think Tesla is working to, you know, 20 million vehicles will be about a quarter of world vehicle production, maybe a fifth of world vehicle production in 2031. So it's not a monopoly in vehicle production. Um, they will probably have a monopoly in terms of, and, and there are other companies like CATL, I think, and LG Chem are working on energy storage. Siemens are working on energy storage devices. I don't think Tesla's going to have a monopoly per se on energy storage. And I don't think Tesla's going to have, you know, robo taxi Tesla will probably have a dominant market position. Um, I do think there's a risk that somebody's going to come in and try to regulate them. But as long as they're lowering prices, I think the reason that you would be concerned about Tesla's dominant market position is they're using their market position to extort maximum profits. And that's not what they're going to do. What they're going to do is they're going to be lowering prices as it grows because you don't want to just build a robo taxi fleet and maximize profit. You, I mean, you, you want to grow profit, but you want to lower prices so that you increase the scale of the market. So the danger of Tesla engaging in monopolistic behavior where they're raising prices because they have a dominant market share is probably somewhere in the 2030s. Um, so I, don't, I don't think it's a problem. And I think Tesla is going to actively work to encourage other EV makers to keep going. Um, Apple is at a fruit company. The revenue on sales of 20 million doesn't make sense for 2030 if they aren't 2031 if they aren't all the consumers. Yes, Robert. I mean that's a little bit of a kludge, but it depends how many of the vehicles they make and put in the robo taxi fleet. Um, honestly, if they're selling the vehicles, the the price per vehicle is going to be much higher. If a fleet buyer is buying the vehicle, they're not going to be paying fifty thousand dollars a people a vehicle. They're going to be paying two hundred fifty thousand dollars a vehicle. Nick Stewart asks, do you think many legacy automaker manufacturers will go bankrupt by 2030? I think many legacy auto manufacturers will go bankrupt long before that. And I think they will be bailed out by their countries and they might go bankrupt the second time. Uh, I think that there will be survivors. I think it's more likely the survivors will be startups than legacy auto because legacy auto just has these constraints. Um, dealership network, unions. Um, bureaucratic structure, government ties. There's, there's too many problems for the legacy automakers to survive. I think my guess is Hyundai will survive. My best guess is Ford has a shot at surviving. Volkswagen will probably be bailed out by the German government. General Motors will be bailed out by the U.S. government and fail again anyway. Um, Toyota might be bailed out by the Japanese government. Um, I could see Tesla partnering with legacy automakers to let them put their brand on Tesla vehicles or, you know, give them some role in manufacturing to do that. What is my estimate? FSD estimate to level four. So let's talk about this. I, I drive FSD. What, any day I drive, I drive FSD. I drive four or five days a week at least. Um, I drive FSD at least half the time, probably more like 80% of the time. I get annoyed with it sometimes and decide to take over because it's too slow. I think that the real driving factor in accelerating the uh, robo tax uh, FSD to the next level, uh, which I would say is safer than human without human supervision, is probably going to be Dojo's expansion. So we've seen Dojo's plot that by the end of next year, they're going to have something like 20 times the computing power they have now. They're going to have a lot more data than they have now. I think when you combine the improvement in neural network, the, the engineers learning how to run their neural networks better and build better neural networks. Dojo providing much higher volume of training compute and greater data. I think those things are going to accelerate the transition to safer than human without human supervision. It's already safer than human with human supervision. I just want to be clear. 
Uh, I don't think the 9.2... James Estrada says, unless you're Ford and get a $9.2 billion bailout loan. The $9.2 billion isn't enough to bail Ford out. They, they're going to need a lot more than that, and they're probably going to get it. It's, they're going to get a $100 billion bailout. Do I think Musk versus Zuckerberg will actually happen? No. I think there's a maybe 50% chance it happens. And I think it'll be fun to watch if it does. And I'm not worried about Elon, and I'm not worried about Zuckerberg, and I think they will... They will raise a huge amount of money for charity if they do it. Victor Block says he drove the Ford Lightning on F on Friday. I must admit, a really nice truck. I've heard a lot of great things about the Ford F-150 Lightning. The problem with the F-150 Lightning is it costs them way too much to build it. Ford has a next generation truck coming. That will probably be much more likely to be profitable. Um, Zachi Forland says, so Tesla in 2030 will be worth $24 trillion. Okay, so I want to be clear. The $24 trillion market cap. Um, it's the same, the, this, this, uh, $24 trillion market cap, 7,500, this is just an example of what it could be. I think it actually might be high. You know, you could certainly take the approach that they're only going to deliver 12 million vehicles and robo taxi revenue will be non-existent or whatever. And you could, you can push this down to $8 trillion and I'm not going to cry, <laughs> right? If it's only 10 X. I'm not going to cry. The point of this video is to show the different speeds with which it accelerates to whatever price it's going to get to, not to focus on which one it's going to be. But I'll take $2,500 share price if that's all we're going to get. I'm not going to cry if that's what happens. Um, my guess is your 2026 estimate will be what we'll see in 2030. So my fast 2026 estimate is still $1,100 a share. I don't know if you mean my fast estimate or my slow estimate. My slow estimate is 628. Um, and that would not be very impressive if they only did 628 or even 1136 in 2031 or whatever. That's, that wouldn't be that impressive. I don't think Tesla bot needs to swim. Um, I don't think that's, I don't think swimming is going to be important. Cybertruck launch party at Giga Austin, August 30th question. No, I don't think so. I think Cybertruck launch party, if we're lucky, will by, be by the end of September, more likely in October. Um, Yeah, I think Musk versus Zuckerberg will be on pay-per-view, and I think it will generate hundreds of millions of dollars for charity. Uh, I cover everything. I think I covered everything. Okay, so about 10 minutes left. I'm just going to look in the chat and see it. So thank you, Mark Mark Plot. Uh, the, the Elon and TSLA stainless steel water bottles are at elonbits.com. The t-shirts are at elonbits.com. I created some new t-shirts recently, but this is by far the most popular. There's one called Discriminate Cogitandi, which is the second most popular. It is Latin for critical thinking. Um, that's also one of my favorite shirts, so check out that shirt. And uh, Summer Vibes 20 is the discount code. It's in the top of the chat, and it's in the uh, description below. Good through July 11th. During retirement, will you sell your Tesla stock to cover expenses or shift your assets to something less volatile like dividend stocks? So I live cheap and I'm about to start living a lot cheaper. Um, I think that at some point I will sell Tesla stock not to cover expenses, but to invest in startups. I have two startups in mind um, that I will be working on, including the Podcar startup that I've been working on and I will be working on it in Japan. And I may at some point sell Tesla stock to cover that. Right now my plan is I'm, I'm selling my house. The house will be sold in a few days, and I'm going to get a pile of cash, and I'm expecting to buy about $50,000 in Tesla stock and maybe $10,000 in options a few days from now. What's my stock price estimate after earnings? Uh, I don't do short-term stock price estimates. I don't think earnings is going to drive stock price significantly. Um, I, I don't know what's going to happen with margins or profit. I don't, I don't, I don't really focus on the short-term. You can see... Look, I just want to show you this because people ask me short-term questions all the time. Do I look like a guy who's focused on short-term stuff? Like, look, you know, I'm focused on 2025, 2027, 2031, you know, 2026. I, I don't focus on what's happening this year. I I, I learned, I, I never really did. And there's a lot of people who want an answer to what's the short-term stock price. What's the stock price going to be next week or whatever. And I just don't. I don't play that game. I think it's impossible to make those predictions well. If somebody could make those predictions well, they'd be a billionaire. Hundredfold Return asks, how is the weather in Japan versus Florida? 
Summers in Japan are generally hot and humid. Winters in Japan are colder than Florida. Most of Japan. I'm going to be somewhere in the Osaka, Kyoto, Nagoya, Tokyo area, which has pretty consistent weather. That is, summer's hot and humid. And winters are colder than Florida. Maybe not much colder than North Florida. They probably get a little bit of snow some years. Um, I'm not selling my house to buy more stocks. I'm selling my house because I got divorced and we're selling the house and I've decided not to buy something yet. And I'm planning on renting and I'm currently renting. This is, I'm house sitting a house with cats, which is why I've been sniffly. And, uh, I'm planning to rent an apartment in probably Nagoya, Japan and pay $800 a month or $600 a month or something like that. Jim Whitehead says, your shirt reminds me of a line from a superhero movie where a guy, Batman, was asked, what's his superpower? And he said, I'm rich. I'm not that rich. Busted, not story. Free the bikinis. Nice. With the immense size of Austin, what else do you see happening in addition to why Cybertruck and 4680? So someone told me that they think the next generation vehicles will be built inside the existing Gigafactory. I'm not convinced of that. I think they're going to build a new building for the next generation vehicle. Um, but it's, I suppose it's possible there's room in Giga Texas to build Model Y and Cybertruck and next generation vehicle. I just think that, you know, for what they're doing with next generation vehicle, it'll make more sense to build a new building. Johnny Football says, maybe you can recruit Toyota engineers in Japan to run your COD top pod car business when Toyota goes bankrupt. So Johnny, it's not Toyota engineers specifically, but there are a lot of engineers graduating from Japanese universities. There's a lot of engineering students in Japanese universities. Um, I'm planning to hire Japanese college students who are working on electric vehicle teams. Um, and engineers in Japan are much less expensive than engineers in the U.S. An engineering graduate in Japan might make thirty or forty thousand dollars a year. A, a good engineering, successful engineering graduate may, might end up getting making thirty or forty thousand a year working for a Japanese company. Uh, uh, an experienced engineer might make $80,000 a year. I think I'm going to be able to hire engineering students for 10 or $15 an hour. Um, so that's going to be good. Use my hair to create burnt hair. Yeah, exactly. My burnt hair cologne is on the way to the house that I was selling, and I've got notice that it's going to arrive after it's sold. So I'm just hoping that the new owners hold it for me and don't use it. Nayan Tin says, How good is your Japanese? Watashi wa nihongo ga sukoshi dekimasu. Restaurant de chumon dekiru. Um, I, I lived in Japan for a year, about 30 years ago. I went to Japan with one of my, with two of my kids. One of my kids took four years of high school Japanese and we're walking around Japan. And the one with four years of high school Japanese said my Japanese was a lot better than theirs. So, uh, it's better than four years of high school Japanese. Um, and I, I'm going to work on it and I'm going to focus on reading the Nihon Keizai Shimbun. What I did when I was lived there was I tried to read Nihon Keizai Shimbun, which is Literally, Japan Economics Newspaper is the equivalent of the Wall Street Journal. It's the source of the Nikkei Index. So, hey, Brian, um, what's your target spec of your pod car? Who may be the customers? Great question, Raymond. The target spec of the pod car is about three and a half, three and a half to four feet wide, three feet high, six and a half feet long, under 500 pound weight, under 200 kilogram weight, something like that. Uh, no steering wheel, no pedals, no doors, no windows, clamshell opening. Uh, as simple as possible suspension, as simple as possible braking system, rely on regenerative braking as much as possible. Um, yeah. Um, and then the target customer is, it's a robo-taxi, it's designed for robo-taxi use, and the target customer is people who want to ride, particularly in poor countries where they can't afford ride in larger vehicles. Steven says, what happens if you meet a Japanese woman and wants to stay? That is actually one of the major goals of going to Japan, is to meet a Japanese woman and stay there and have children there. That is one of the major goals of going to Japan for me. I've tried to find a wife here and have kids here, and I've failed miserably, and I'm not blaming the women in America. All I can say is I'm apparently not what they're looking for. I mean, I want somebody under 35, and I'm 57, and I totally understand that 35-year-old women aren't looking for a 57-year-old man, or there's something about my personality or my approach that's just not working. Um... Jim Whitehead says, engineers are cheaper there. When I was in an Aon conference, a young AI guy from Japan was getting paid 38K while I was making about 90K. He thought I was lying. Yeah, it's it, there was a, a video I just saw recently where Chinese companies are hiring Japanese engineers away from their companies to like a washing, a laundry machine company. Japanese women only make nests and hairy chest. I don't think that's true. 
Um, Japan is definitely not tropical like Florida. Uh, I think the Okinawa area is tropical like Florida. I think southern Kyushu is probably close to tropical, but maybe not. Um, the Pacific Ocean's cold, so wherever you are on the Pacific Ocean, you're you're. It, it's hard to get tropical. I mean, Hawaii does it. I think, I think that Okinawa is more tropical, but I'm not going to Okinawa. Um, store your weapons here. Oh, so uh, I am planning to sell um, at least one of my bang sticks. <laughs> I've got a friend who's going to hold one of my bang sticks, um, or two of my bang sticks, I should say. When you get to Japan, I would love to see some walking around sightseeing videos. Yeah, I'm probably going to make videos in Japan. I'm probably not going to make, at least not on this channel, I don't expect to make life in Japan videos. It's possible I'll make a channel about life in Japan. I don't think that there's a lot of demand for that. I think there's already other channels that do that. I'm not sure I'm going to add a lot of value to that. But I think videos about EVs in Japan, videos about Tesla in Japan, I'll, I'll probably make videos like that. And if there is, in fact, if, they, if I'm correct that there will be a Giga Osaka, then I'll be doing Giga Osaka videos. Smoot says, can you grow a beard? You could pull off a Rich Cooper look. I know you've heard of I've watched a lot of Rich Cooper videos. The, the channel's Entrepreneurs and Cars. I don't like Rich Cooper. I don't hate him, but I don't really like him. I think he's very misguided. And I think he misleads a lot of people. And I can't grow a beard. I can grow a beard, but I, it just gets super itchy. I just personally don't like, I actually shaved before this video. I find facial hair just gets super itchy. How many Tesla stock do you own? I own a lot of Tesla stock. <laughs> a lot. Um, I, I own, um, I own more than a million dollars in Tesla stock. I'll say that. Okay. Um, okay. So I'm going to wrap up. Shortly, uh, please check out the t-shirts at elonbits.com. Again, Summer Vibes 20 is the discount code. If you are a supporter and you overused the discount code, DM me and I will give you another discount code so you can buy more stuff. If you use it once, I don't think you get to use it again. So just send me a message and I'll provide you with a different discount code. Um, Victor Block says, I've always lived well below my means and a huge increase in Tesla share price will cause me to travel more and donate more. Um, I live cheap. And the Tesla share price increase will cause me to, will allow me to invest more in my startups and get my startups going. Japan does have great restaurants. I think the thing about Japan's restaurants is they're surprisingly inexpensive. Uh, yes, Mark, I have heard complaints about Japanese women about that. Do you think it'll take me more than a few? I won't be driving a car. I don't plan on owning a car in Japan. I am, I am now thinking, okay, if I get my Cybertruck delivery, will I take it to Japan? And I think the answer is no, but part of me is starting to say I should bring Cybertruck to Japan. Why is Tesla slowing down sales in Korea when Korea is the biggest retail investors? Uh, I don't know the answer to that. I didn't know they were slowing down sales in Korea. So again, elonbits.com. Please support me on the various platforms. Second video starting in five minutes um, at uh, warrenredlick.locals.com. There's a link in the video description below. Uh, thank you, Mark Potoshnik, for putting that link up. Do I use the blue pill? What color the pill is that I used? I occasionally use a pill. I don't think it's blue. Um, I could be wrong about that. Okay, so thanks everybody so much for watching. Thank you to the moderators. Uh, please check out my other videos. Like this video, share, and subscribe. Check out the t-shirts at elonbits.com, Summer Vibes 20 discount code. Check out my other videos. Support me on the Locals platform, on Patreon, as a YouTube channel member, as a Twitter subscriber. And thank you all so much for watching.